Okay, there, there you go. Yep, got it. All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> we made it. I'm excited now. Okay. All right, technical difficulties. Okay. We're, we're good now. Hi, everybody. Good morning, and God bless each and every one of you. I was kind of thinking about this moment, and I, I was looking at each one of you guys, and I was noticing Kennedy, and Kennedy was doing like, whew, and I was saying to myself, that's right. You know, this is a hot seat, especially with the situation that we have here, all this technical stuff that we're trying to do here. But anyway, we're here now. And, I, and like I said, I would like to say good morning to everyone. You know, God has blessed each and every one of us with another day of life, and we should be thankful. It's a lot going on out there, and we should be thankful. We should be thankful for God blessing us with another day of life. You know, God is all powerful and he's almighty and he can take care of all of our needs. But I stand before you this morning, humbled in the, in the presence of you and on this platform. God works with us and as we do lessons and study God's word, it has a way of working with you and seeing things in a different way. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, to, to, to draw closer to God because he will, close, he will draw closer to you. Let us pray at this time. Heavenly Father, I humbly bow in your presence. We humbly bow in your presence to honor you, to praise you, to uplift you, and to honor you and thank you for your grace and your mercy, your goodness and your kindness. We are mindful of all the things that's going on and we just want to focus in on you. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. One of the most significant things or benefits in our technological age is that while we shelter in place, doesn't mean that we are being cut, out, cut off from the outside world. Today, we can maintain contact with our loved ones via telephone, tele videoing, video calling, or other means. We can keep in contact with emails and phone calls and all that stuff like that. As a member of the body of church, of body of Christ, we have been conducting our service via Zoom platform. I must say that this does not provide the visible care that we all expect to have. You know, when we come together as the body of Christ, we are able to greet and show our warm hearts to each other and handshake and just to enjoy each other coming. With this, Zoom platform is great, but it does, it does not take all of that uh, warmth that we can feel under consideration. But I feel you guys today, and I'm thankful for just being able to come before you. But I must say, I can't wait to get back to the building, to the sanctuary. Can't wait to get back there to see you guys and greet you. The most important thing that we do today is to worship God in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, yet a time is coming and it now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they that worship him and worship the Father must seek him. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him and in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 and 24. This means that whatever is distracting us from us worshiping him, we need to focus in strictly on God. We must give him praise for his everlasting mercy. Worship him in spirit and truth. Okay, it says, praise be to God for his everlasting mercy. Psalms 118, one through four. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercies endure forever. Let Israel say now, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say now, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say now, his mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
we should be rejoicing in the Lord. We should mean, we should thank God for his everlasting mercy and his everlasting guidance. God has given us the victory, and no matter what we face in time, in life, God still sits on the throne. The title of this lesson, God Provides Stability. I like the version that Eric, uh, or, or, or Alex read. It was a very interesting version, and I like that. I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. And it says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and in righteousness. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. And strength and salvation, the, and strength and salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. I'm going to tell you a little background about this passage right here. During this time right here, Isaiah, the prophet, came to the children of Israel. The, the Assyrian army was, was advancing and conquering kingdom after kingdom. The northern kingdom of Israel was taken into captivity. The Assyria, Assyrian army drew near to Jerusalem, and the people was undecided what to do. Some was in favor of giving themselves up to the Assyrians. Others was looking to the south, believing an allied alliance with Egypt would save them. Isaiah was sent to warn the people to do neither. Some was in favor to give themselves up. Some were favored to just sit. But what the Lord has told them was trust in the Lord and not men. The Lord will provide stability that they need when all seem lost. This army was mighty army that was getting ready to attack them. And we know the story about the captivity of, of Israel, of the children of God. Thousand years later, this advice to stay put and trust in the Lord still stands today. In troubled times, the Lord will provide the stability of your time. God mm -hmm. provides stability. This world has some unstable conditions. Sometimes we face many different disturbing things in life. Many of these things are common in every age. Job says in Job 14 and 1, man is born of woman and is of few days and full of trouble. In our lives, we have sickness. We have death, natural disasters. In these modern times, the threat of nuclear holocaust environmental pollution, inflation, recession, financial crisis, unemployment, AIDS, cancer, heart disease, road rage, drive-by shootings, and innocent shootings. I have to throw that in there. The world is faced with many different, well, now the world is faced with the coronavirus. The corona pandemic is spreading throughout the world. On March 19, 2020, the governor of California ordered a statewide shelter-in-place order. That's almost two months ago. A lot of things has happened since then. The virus has spread rapidly. New cases are being discovered every day. The numbers are getting higher and higher. The death toll is getting higher and higher. And I must say that it is just sad every day to wake up and hear about all of the deaths that was there that's going on in the world. There are common reactions that people feel while sheltered and facing and experiencing all of these things that's going on with the pandemic. This shelter in place order is frightening and is a clear indication of just how serious the world situation is. People react to this situation in different ways. People react to this, this situation in different ways. According to the American Red Cross, it says, it is important to understand the natural reactions and how to cope with them. The Red Cross says that it is normal for people to experience some of these following things. Anxiety, 
uncertainty, concerns about the safety of ourselves and others, frustration due to the unknown situation, frustration due to media inconsistencies, confusion due to the misinformation and rumors, guilt about being unable to to fulfill normal responsibilities, boredom, cabin fever, thoughts of worry, fear or blame, concerns about losing income, concerns about meeting for financial obligations, problems focusing or staying on certain tasks, changes in appetites, Activity level and sleep patterns are thrown off. While the nature of, while the nature of the current shelter in place order may affect you in certain different ways, you might experience all of these things or most of them or just a few. In order to stay safe, it is important to realize that this is a natural response to an extremely challenging situation. The best thing that you can do is realize that it's okay to feel these emotions. If you need help coping with the situation, please get some help. If you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. If you need someone to listen to you, get someone to listen to you. Please handle this situation appropriately. But remember, your emotional health as you and your fam family shelter in place Remember to take care of your emotional health and everyone in your family, because everyone reacts different to, stress, to stressors. It can be difficult to manage many different mindsets at one time. Make sure that everyone in your household has attention and recognition that they need to maintain their emotional health. Recognize those who need more support and give adequate attention. Remember, your family emotional health is important. As I was doing this lesson, I was thinking about the story that affect, I would say a, a biblical family that was in a situation like we are, a quote unquote shelter in place situation. Noah and his family came in mind with the flood. Now, as I was doing this study, and this study, the, 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 uh, Genesis chapter six through nine, where you can find the story about Noah and his family and the flood. If you haven't read it, please read it. And if you have read it, read it again. But when you read it, think about all of the events that we're facing now in our life with this pandemic. We're sheltered in place nor in this family or shelter in place. We are facing extreme difficulties, nor in this family are, were, are facing super, super extreme situations. The most important thing that we need to think about as we read this, we can say that God is good and he will provide for us. He will provide the stability that we need to face all the challenges that we have in life. But the next time you read this story about Noah and, and, the, and the flood, think about being on a cruise for one year with, on a ship without a sail, without a motor, floating, and probably didn't have an oar or a rudder. Think about that you would never touch the ground for a whole year. You study floating. I like cruises and I've been on cruises, but I wouldn't want to be on a cruise for a year. Noah and his family faced many obstacles and many different things in their life as they were on that water. But think about them, they were sheltered in place. The first 40 days of, of their experience when the Lord shut the door was the most traumatic thing that they could ever experience. Any human being on earth will feel real bad about that situation because I don't know how many people's on that earth at that time. 
could have been 500,000 to a billion people or more. But there was a lot of people there. The first 40 days, all of those people was dead. All of their people that they knew were dead. Dead, wiped off from the face of the earth. It was just Noah and his family members was there. It was alive. Everybody they knew was gone. People in desperate situations acts react different. The cycle, the mind reacts different. Faith of individuals that was on that ship, on that boat, varied. Noah could have been the strongest one on there. The other ones could have been weak. So I say that we need to look to the Lord for the provision that he would give us in our time of need. Just like Noah gave to his family that was on that ship. Noah had to support them. We have to support each other. But I'm here today to tell you that God will take care of us and give us the stability and provide everything that we need in life. I just wanted to leave that with you with Noah's story because it's a very important story that we have to take in our lives to understand what we're going through in life. When we are a humble down, God put us down, we're down in the low part, that's when we can look up to the Lord. And that's where the Lord can bless our lives. He can bless our lives in the things that we go through and the things that we experience. The Lord lift them up. Brothers and sisters, God will take care of us and provide the stability that we need. And every Christian should be able to tell someone that God's son, Jesus Christ, has experienced everything that we have been through, everything that we ever go through, Jesus Christ experienced. That's why he can say, come to me, all you who labor in a heavy lading, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you should find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens is life. Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Give the Lord all the problems. He will provide stability in your troubled times. He will provide stability in a time of our troubles that we are experiencing now. God will provide stability that comes through wisdom and knowledge. James chapter 1 verse 8, or chapter 5 and 8 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not experience, expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. We must remember that the Lord would add to us the things that we need in life. We need to count on him, like James said. God provides stability that comes through salvation. The salvation of the Lord can help us face certain things and it can help us face death knowing that we have him to receive us at the end of our life. We can shelter in a time of storm and because he loved us, we can be confident and sure because of the sacrifice that his son made on our behalf. All we have to do is just have a little talk with Jesus. That was the song series that we had. I had to throw that in there because that was important. We just have to talk to the Lord and he will provide for us. We know that if this earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands, but built by the Lord. We should have the attitude like Paul. Paul writes, therefore, do not lose heart, though our outward man is wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Our light monetary troubles are achieving for us an external, external glory that far outweighs them all. So fix, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, 
And what is unseen is eternal. What is un God is eternal. We don't see him, but he's eternal. And we need to count on him for the stability that we have. The key to stability is the fear of the Lord. In our scripture reading, verse Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6, tells us about the fear of the Lord is essential. Is essential to having wisdom, knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. If God call you a fool, you're a fool. Be on God's side and be one of his children. And you'll be following his instruction and you will gain knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One with understanding. The fear of the Lord is needed to receive salvation. With many of the words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Those who gladly received the word was baptized, and about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed was together and had all things in common. And they sold possessions and good, and they divided them amongst all. Everyone had the need. So they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house. They ate their food with sincere and gladness and simplicity of heart, praising the Lord and having favored all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. As the apostles, as the disciples of Jesus Christ, we break bread from house to house via Zoom. We worship God in spirit and truth via Zoom, but our hearts and minds are set on Him. God will clear our minds of all the things that causes problems, then we can face him and we can look at him and he will give us the things that we need in life as we're focusing on him. Like these first disciples or these children on the day of Pentecost was looking to the Lord for the guidance and understanding that they need. So fear is the motivation to look for spiritual growth. It says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my present only, but much more in my absence. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. That means we need to put God first. We need to strive and study his word. We need to obey his word, not only read and study it, but we need to do what it says. In conclusion of my lesson, those who not lack stability in troubled times, they lack it because they don't have wisdom of God. They lack salvation of the Lord because they need to hear the word and believe it and repent of their souls and be baptized in it. Hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized, and, and be faithful unto death. These are the things that we need to do as we look to God for our livelihood. He will take care of us in the time of the storm. There is a, a game, that's, it's a board game. It's called Monopoly. This game right here is a very interesting game. It, when I was a child, we was taught by this, this, this we, we played this game and it was very important to our development. It teaches you how to handle money and how to buy property the object of this game is to accumulate much wealth and much money and property as you can, and the winner will cause everybody else to go bankrupt. So the thing about this game, you could be the winner of the game, and after the game, the board is folded back up, the pieces are put back in the box, and the game is over. It's gone. There's a story about Multi -billion, a multi-billionaire at a funeral. His funeral was going on. 
he had died, his funeral was going on. And two of his friends were sitting there and they was thinking about their friend, the, the multi-billionaire. They was thinking about all the stuff he had. And they said, one of them said, how much you think he left? The other one said, all of it. So what I'm saying is that you leave everything, leave everything behind. But if we have God on our side, he will provide us with the stability that we need in order to sustain us in life. The passage that we read this morning, the Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. God is sitting on the throne. He has filled Zion with justice and righteous. God is righteous and he will just us, I mean, he will judge us. Knowledge and wisdom will be the stability of our lives. So as we focus on God, we will gain the stability that we need in our lives. And strength and salvation, we will find salvation through the Lord, through knowing his son Jesus Christ is being baptized into his body. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So as we fear the Lord and as we respect him and, and develop our study habits with the Lord, we would be able to gain insight to his light, to his love, and know just how much he loves us. And we can experience everything that we need to get us through all of this. Closing, please rely on the Lord for these times. Sometimes it's hard to focus. Sometimes we might get discouraged. But we can focus in on the law and he will give us everything we need to make it through all of this. I know this lesson was kind of hard, but at the same time, we need to be aware of what's going on and we need to focus on the real thing. Because the real thing is trusting in the Lord and we know that he will be there for us. So at this time, we will just think about and we ask, uh, if you have a prayer request, you can call or make it known to us and we will pray for you. If you need to be baptized, we can make arrangements for that. But if you need anything in life that would help you through that, you can call any of the elders or the brothers and sisters and we will support you the best way we can. I thank you for your attention and I pray that it was something I might have said that might encourage you to look at God who provides stability in troubled time. Thank you very much.